Hello everyone, welcome to day three of our custom mail-in tournament with the Deadly Clown Car. Let's see what our first group for today is. It is Mr. Dark, Old Sarge, Rob Maverick, and Uncle Fokker. And here we go, it looks like Fokker is taking an early lead. And as we saw with Arlo, the bigger lead that you have, then the better chances you have of an easy progression to the next round because the further you are ahead, the sooner you can trigger that clown car, and the sooner that clown car is triggered, the less likely anyone else will get any points. So there goes Uncle Fokker. So far, he is in the lead and has been able to handle those turns relatively well, staying straight. And he heads towards the finish line. It looks like he's going to finish in first, and he will. Finishing under 18 seconds, and three of our racers managed to finish in front of the deadly clown car, while our fourth racer is not as fortunate. Let's see, were at least three of the racers able to pass before the clown car was triggered? Yes, but just barely. The clown car almost landed on top of one of them. That was not the case, and anyone who started in front of the clown car stayed that way. And a time I don't think it was the fastest time we've seen. It's not. The fastest time we had so far is about a 17.1 held by Arlo from day two. But as of now, Rebel Racer is the only person who has not lost a single race yet. Arlo was close, but didn't quite get there. But it is Fokker who got the first place finish, followed closely by Maverick. And then Dark and Sarge. Now they're actually splitting up relatively even, evenly spaced. And as the lanes split, Fokker does have the lead currently, but he is not too far ahead. And I really think there's something about that part of the track around where that clown car is triggered that causes the person in front to slip up. Maybe it's the trigger itself, but some people seem to shake a little bit and sometimes they spin around entirely. But for now, Uncle Fokker still gets that second win despite that little, I don't want to say slip up because it didn't really mess them up too much. But they finished in first again. And will this one finish? They're getting really close, but it doesn't look like they'll have the speed to do it. So history has essentially repeated itself after that first race in almost the exact same way. They almost got flattened by the clown car again as they passed through. You could almost argue that it's the exact same footage, but I don't think it is. And you can see a lot of people, when they start to spin out, they go up against the wall because that is the quickest way to straighten out. But it also can be risky because staying on the wall too long can cause you to lose speed and allow others to catch up to you or worse. So Uncle Fokker still has not lost a race after two races and two more in this group to go. And as we begin race three, Rob Maverick has a slight edge over Fokker, but then Fokker quickly takes it back. They are sharing side-by-side -side lanes. And maybe that outside lane was giving Uncle Fokker an edge because now he has the lead while Old Sarge and Dark are way back there, and the clown car actually got between them. So at least one racer may not finish again, but we'll have to see. For now it is a battle for first between Uncle Fokker and Rob Maverick. Rob Maverick actually is pretty close, especially when compared to other races leading up to this one, but Uncle Fokker still got the win. Meanwhile, Dark finished, and Old Sarge is way back there. Where is the clown car? I don't know if Old Sarge will have enough speed to finish. So far he's been able to get there, but not have the speed to finish the job. And that seems to be the case once again. Yeah, this is something you don't see every day. It's actually the clown car that got stuck and flipped over. 
Oh, and now we understand why. As they got off the ramp, this time they did land on top of Mr. Dark, and as a result, they couldn't get their footing, and they could not react fast enough to get back on their feet and keep going. So while the clown car almost hit Mr. Dark the first couple of times, it did happen this time, and it's the clown car who got stuck up there. That being said, though, old Sarge, being way back in the pack, did not have the speed necessary to cross the finish line again, so they will once more get zero points. Meanwhile, Uncle, Fo Uncle Fokker, I gotta be careful when saying that name, is very close to staying undefeated. They are already guaranteed to move on, but now they just want those bragging rights by finishing in first all four times. And so far they do have that lead, but here comes Rob Maverick again. And it looks like at least the two of them will stay in front of that clown car for now. I want to say Mr. Dark had just enough of an edge. And as I'm saying this, somehow, Uncle Fokker, slowing down to a near stop, got bumped ahead by Rob Maverick, who is now the one stop themselves. And now here comes Uncle Fokker. Will he have enough speed to cross the finish line? They might, but here comes a clown car. Will they push them? Or pass them. In a way, they might have done both. It is hard to tell. But no one else will even finish at all. I'm not sure if Uncle Fokker is going to get those points or not. And Mr. Dark is somehow completely upside down. Maybe he hit somebody or had a little too much to drink before the race. I'm not sure. As we move forward a little bit, you can see that Rob Maverick not only stopped, but somehow wound up with his front wheel on the railing. It seems everybody who didn't finish did so in a unique way, at least when compared to each other. Something happened with Uncle Fokker on this race, and he was not able to stay straight after tripping up that clown car. Yeah, somehow, Rob Maverick went up on the railing, and even though he got bumped a couple times, he still stayed there. But the big question is, did the clown car pass Uncle Fokker or not before he crossed the finish line? That was way too close to call. Let's see what the judges say. They are giving the points to Uncle Fokker, so he is going to stay undefeated and Rob Maverick will join him in the final round. For the second group, we have End Count, Tito, Tasman, and Banjo. I'm loving the way some of these cars look. Hopefully those designs will translate into performances that'll give them a lot of points, but it's not looking like that for at least one of them. And pardon me if it takes me a race or two to remember all the racers' names. I don't want to say the wrong one by complete accident. But this kind of setup is looking a little familiar as we have one racer out in front. But here comes a clown car coming up to second and third. We're not sure where our fourth place racer is. They're either stuck or way behind. In fact, here they come now. So far, I don't think anyone's been able to beat Arlo's time of 17.1. And even if this one finishes, which they won't, they still would have gotten zero points because the clown car finished in front of them. I'm not sure if it's the design or what, but you can see that that last racer is way back there. And almost, almost, you almost can't tell if they're moving forwards or backwards. But that just constitutes how creative their design is. But for now, the clown car finished in front of them, so again, even if they did finish, no points would have been awarded. So it is End Count who got that one, followed by Banjo, then Tasman, and Tito was the one who did not finish. Now as the second race begins, Tasman is pulling away 
from Tito. Well, End Count and Banjo are fighting for first place, but now Tasman is actually right up alongside them and has passed Banjo. Well, End Count is rocketing ahead all of a sudden, keeping smooth, not really bouncing off the walls all that much. And here they go down the ramp towards the last turn, in the, leading into the straightaway where the finish line is waiting for them. They did clip the wall a little bit, but they stayed straight and finished in first. Followed by Tasman, then Banjo this time. Meanwhile, the clown car finishes in fourth, so Tito is stuck with another big goose egg. Let's see, end count went through, triggered the clown car, and Tasman and Banjo were able to get through before the clown car got on the track. So they were in a much better position, and Tito, I was about to say, seemed to do a little bit better, but they actually did about the same there, from the looks of things anyway. But a great run by end count, certainly not the quickest time we've ever seen. But they did have some moments where, as long as they stayed off the wall, they were actually pretty fast. So as long as they can, can keep good control, they might still pose a threat later on. But End Count now has two wins under their belt, one more, and they'll automatically progress. And so far they do have a slight edge over Banjo. They split up and go in different parts of the track. And these three, End Count, Banjo, and Tasman, are fighting for that lead. So far, it's in favor of End Count, who goes forward, triggers that clown car, and I guess it is the trigger that's causing racers to jolt to the side for just a moment, which could trip them up later. But so far, that is not the case. End Count is riding that wall a little bit to stay straight so he doesn't spin around, does it a couple more times, which slows him down significantly. But he still managed to finish in first, and this time, the clown car passed Tasman, so neither they nor Tito will get any points in this race. And Tito seems to stop around the same area each time, so while it looks like they have a lot of power, it seems like they might have sacrificed some of that power for speed, or sacrificed a lot of their speed for that power. So maybe they could perform well in some other type of derby, but in a race like this, I'm not sure if that particular design is going to help them here. I mean, so far it hasn't, but I'm sure that design can be used for something else. But they are putting in a valiant effort, so props to them on that one. But for now, end count has those three wins, so they'll automatically move on to the final round of today's video. Can they get the bragging rights? Because our last group, our last group, excuse me, did not get that. So we'll see if End Count has any better fortune. Around the bend, the lanes merge back together. The clown car is triggered. And I was going to say only End Count and Banjo were able to finish, well not finish, but get through before the clown car arrived. But Tasman came out of nowhere and had a burst of speed which was just enough to get them in front of that clown car, which is what they desperately needed right now. Banjo almost caught up to End Count, but End Count still finished in first, so they will go into the final round not having lost a single race. And look at this, not even the clown car finished this time. Which doesn't change much for Tito, who got stuck in almost the exact same spot. So I believe it'll be End Count and Banjo who will be moving on. Tasman did have a shot at it until that third race where the clown car finished in front of them, and that probably shook up their mojo a little bit, if you will. But they did finish this time. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't think it is. And some of that can be blamed on that ferocious clown car.
Let's check the points. It is Encount and Banjo. We'll move on to the final round, which will now begin. It'll feature Encount and Banjo alongside our previous two progressors, Rob Maverick and Uncle Fokker. Uncle Fokker had a little bit of a slip up, otherwise he might have had a shot at staying undefeated as well. But now look at this. When they meet up with Banjo and Encount, it is Encount who currently has a lead, followed very closely by Rob Maverick. But now Uncle Fokker shot around that turn, and they are fighting for first with Encount. And here comes Rob Maverick trying to pass Encount so far unsuccessful, but he did nudge Encount forward a little bit. That might give them what they need to take the lead. But as they get around that turn, Uncle Fokker gets a bigger lead, and they finish in first. So Rebel Racer will continue to be the only undefeated racer so far. But that is a clash to be sure. As they got to that clown car trigger, they were neck and neck, and then Uncle Fokker was able to grab that lead and stay there until the end of the race. Although I will say Uncle Fokker, their control is a little bit of a roll of the dice sometimes, for the most part. They do relatively well going around those turns and staying off the walls, but every once in a while they start spinning around or losing control, or just some other unexpected accident. And the top two will move on, so even if Encount isn't undefeated anymore, he and Uncle Fokker are so far in the best position to get to the grand finals of this tournament. And so far they are in the top two, but here comes Rob Maverick again. Can he pass Encount this time? Almost the exact same thing happens. Encount blocks them. So far, I think all four racers are in front of the clown car. But Uncle Fokker has an even bigger lead than before. And he finishes in first yet again. And Encount finishes in second once more. And the clown car did not have any victims in this race. So everyone will be getting points. Which in most other tournaments would be a commonality, but that clown car is really shaking things up a bit. Uncle Fokker is doing well so far. I'm sure he is not thrilled about his undefeated title being taken away. So that could be a source of motivation. Those flames on the sides of the vehicle may not be just for show. And how, here we are now in race three. They're all, I was about to say they were all neck and neck, but after that lane split, they spread out a little bit more and Uncle Fokker is back in the lead. And this setup is looking really familiar right now with end count in second, but Rob Maverick hot on his tail. Trying multiple times to pass end count so far has not been able to pull that off. Despite how close they've gotten, but look at that! As they go off screen and reappear, Rob Maverick has a decent lead over end count. So that keeps Rob Maverick's hopes alive of staying in this tournament. Meanwhile, Uncle Fokker is guaranteed to go to the Grand Finals. It's just a matter of who will join him. It'll likely be either Rob Maverick or Encount. Banjo at least got this far, but I don't think they'll get much further. Yeah, Uncle Fokker is already going to move on. If Rob Maverick can finish in front of Encount again, then we might end up having a tiebreaker here. But if Encount finishes in front of Rob Maverick, then Rob Maverick's journey in this tournament is over. And so far, Encount is in front of him. In fact, he's almost side by side with Uncle Fokker. And look at this banjo is actually keeping up with Rob Maverick now. The time in this tournament is about to expire, but it looks like they're going to put their best foot forward, all things considered. Here comes Encount towards the finish line, but here comes Rob Maverick. I think he's going to pass him. No, I guess Encount had just enough to block him. So Encount will finish in second. 
and Rob Maverick is out. And here comes the clown car looking to stare down their victims at the end of this tournament. But I believe this means End Count will be joining Uncle Fokker in the next stage. Yeah, all four racers were able to get through before the clown car attacked, which has not always been the case. Look how far behind they are, too. They're not moving very fast. They go around the bend. I thought Rob Maverick was going to be able to get them, but it looked like they nicked the back corner of end count and spun around, causing them to lose control along with their chances to move on. And the clown car decided to give Rob Maverick one last stare down before Rob Maverick left this tournament and Uncle Fokker and End Count will be the ones joining our previous winners in the next stage of the tournament. Thank you all so much for watching. See you on the next day.